Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afo Labi Brown, as always. I have my lovely co host, our lady. Good morning. Nima in the building. Yo, Why yo. Why are you all wrapped yo. around? What's, 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 what's going on here? Suddenly, so started having the feverish feelings Aww. this morning. Yeah. I've been stressing myself. To the extent I'm missing my goosey soup that you know was made from made from the ram head oh. at uh, my mother-in-law's place. So tomorrow morning, first thing in the morning, I'm going to go and recoup that soup because <laughs> I'm certainly not cooking. But wow. I'm kind of tired. Brilliant, it's really brilliant. Very very Good lovely. Have, but I like the green. You look nice on you. Yeah. The makeup of this whole week has been so beautiful. I've been telling her mm -hmm. to stop using black cooking bono. I was drinking this one. <laughs> That's how you come. Hey, I'm wearing three colors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very what are your good. Plans for the weekend, anything exciting? Um, this weekend, I actually thought I was going to go to Badagri for Mrs. In-Law's wedding, but um, the body language of my ogre at the top uh, is like I'm not in the mood. So apparently, this weekend we'll probably keep it cool and but focus I guess on my studio. Somewhere. Yeah, it's Badagri, yeah. like, but like, but it's a travel. journey. It's a it's journey. Not a travel. You know, but then um, the studio is coming together. I'm really grateful to oh, God. So we're launching um, this weekend by God's grace. Um, I don't Soon? want to. Yeah, okay. I don't want to rush it. Okay. So, but it's coming together. I'm liking what I'm seeing. You know, grateful to God for all the blessings. I'm good. So the new store will be upstairs and downstairs. No, no, no. The new store is um, a story building, yeah. but my makeup studio is on the first, first floor, floor, which is mm. great. Cool. Hey, Jimzo. I got white case can be going on today. Ah. You know, Kunle can be has been trending, and we are like, you know what? YK, we say if we want to launch our own can be. <laughs> YK really needs to go and do um, a fashion, line. fashion clothes, yeah, fashion line. Because she has um, her own style, and it's interesting. Yeah, and, and YK is, you know, if you pay attention, maybe I'm getting old, shall we? <laughs> no, but I think YK's, really good YK's style is interesting. Um, yesterday, I met Olumide Adiola Samuel. Um, <laughs> Popular. <laughs> you know, he's in the country. He says his 12-year-old son wants to know why his father is that color. And he says, you know what? You're from Nigeria. And the son says, I want to go and know my country. Wow. And that's why they're here, just for the son. And so, um, Seal hasn't been here for almost 40 years. One thing that struck him is nothing in terms of development has changed. So, regardless of that, he's leaving. They took him to the high posh areas, but mm. he saw that the disparity was still bad. Infrastructure, mm. poverty, the disparity between the rich and the poor still is bad. still huge. Still bad. You know, but it is well, it's yeah. cool. We don't appreciate our own um, Africanness. We don't appreciate our link with our heritage. Yeah. But people that are over there, they are like, okay, I'm black. Let me come to places where everybody around me looks it's, like me. Yeah. Or like I'm in somewhere they would look at me like that black guy. Yeah. Here, everybody is black. There's yeah, no difference, true. which is good. He said to his son, no one will call you a nigger here. <laughs> <laughs> so you paid a surprise visit to um, the shrine. Yeah, yeah. That's it was cool. a surprise visit. Cool. And it was really nice to see him. Cool. Elijah was there. She's hiding the fact that she was there. She has <laughs> a picture with him. <laughs> what are you? What's your plan for the weekend? Oh, cool. I would, Any party I mean, this weekend? I was, I was really hurt that I wasn't at uh, this shrine. But when my husband now found out, he said, let's start going. Let's start going. I'm sure he has left already. Because he really likes you. Because he, he actually sings oh, songs. Dad didn't like the picture. He really uh, so he's really loved it. He loves it. <laughs> but I'm oh, close. You were too close. You were too close. <laughs> exactly. I knew that I would have been it. And I knew. Elijah, you can allow somebody hold you like that. Yeah. 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 It just happens. Don't doubt it. Because I can't never calling her now. They, no, they will call me this one. You know what I said. But you know people don't know the boundaries. He probably didn't know the boundaries. So he just did the usual, oh, let me hug you kind of thingy, which shouldn't be. Yeah. I'm off to a career today. Wow. What's going on? radio station in Adaba. It's 10 years. Wow. So lots of people are there celebrating with them. So there's a dinner party tonight. And then I'm back to Lagos, have a party in Lekki, 60th birthday party. Then on Sunday, I have another party. Man, you stop sure. giving me invites, Your weekend man. is, Good your weekend you is your like job. You keep saying like, you don't, don't stop giving me invites, invite, but you have invite. a choice. You can decide not to Wait, go. Wait, there are a lot of people that, this one I cannot say no. Excuse me. Everybody, you Saturday cannot say no. Definitely, I'm going. Sunday, I'm still like, you see what we're saying? Should I not? You see what we're saying? If you do not go to one or two, they will get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said I'm not sure she doesn't. But want listen, to don't don't let, but it's don't, fun. You don't get eat good food. Don't let the people that invited me for tomorrow think I don't want to go. Please, that your party, I must be there. <laughs> that Saturday, that lucky one, I am. Pack my clothes, Mulasi, Dragon Alano, pick up the dress. I'm coming. Sunday, 
I will still get back to you. <laughs> 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 Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with the punch very quickly. Opposition can't fault my efforts at solving problems, says Buhari. You are surrounded by corrupt people, PDP tells president. Picture here, cross-section of participants at the 2018 Oju Oba Festival in Ogun State. Uh, power drunk Lagos DPO leads team to Musk, raid faithfuls and others. CBM pegs maximum credit facility to a Greek manufacturing at 10 billion naira. Honest airport guards rewarded with money and scholarship. Okay, that's the halogen guys. Yeah. PDB reps to Warren APC groups. Your 2019 ambition distracting us. Mm. BPE invites investors for Afampa Yola Disco. Demolition at Jimomi meets Ayinka Ayifele. Mm. And uh, National Assembly Joint Panel meets Monday over INEC budget. All right. We know, you know this, this police story? I, because we know that police yeah. is trying so hard to yeah. change things. So when I hear these kind of stories, I feel like they're going to well, fix that's it. That's the problem. The, sto the headline was, you know, was kind of sensational. Okay. It was misleading because okay. it was a raid, yes. It was a raid in a particular area, yes. And it passed through a mosque, yes, it did. So some guys had finished um, 9 to 8 p.m. prayer, the Isha prayers, and were outside the mosque, in front of the house where the mosque was, and, you know, they were raided at long. Now, the style of raiding, I didn't want, like, Muslim faithful to it, so it doesn't seem religious. The style of raiding was, they had a tip of that some uh, cultist uh, guys were going to attack the area. They swept the area mm. and, you know, picked up everybody in sight, including underage, including everybody, to the station. Now, where the problem was when it comes to police issue was the fact that the witnesses and some of the people picked up were saying, we paid. They, were being, they wrote down their names, and the DPO in question, whose name was mentioned, was calling them out one after the other to pay 15,000 naira for their bill. So they negotiated for three people to pay right. 30, and he collected this money. Mm. Now the, the PRO for Lagos is saying, no, that's not the case. Mm. That they got a tip of that the court guys were attacking, and they swept the area, right. yes, okay. but that they didn't right. ask them to pay. Right. But the, chief, uh, the commissioner for police. police in Lagos is investigating the the authenticity of that claim that they had to pay okay. for their bill. All right, so who has the Aifele story? No, Aifele, no. Okay, which story do you have? I had the oh, CBN I story. I we can take okay. Aifele because the picture is bold in, um, I think, mm -hmm. Sun or something. Yeah. Um, however, the Central Bank of Nigeria has released a new guideline for um, releasing funds to agric and manufacturing um, companies. The idea is the fact that um, the guidelines will be stipulated. It wasn't released. So I was wondering what the information is about. But they want to make us feel like something is going on. So um, they said by 24th, the meeting was in 23rd and 24th of July, but they released the breakdown of how you can access the loans, that banks be made compulsory for banks to give um, low interest loans to agric based businesses to encourage that's good. actually 10,000 naira loans to, to small businesses. No, 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 no. this is a bulk, yeah. this is major money. There's yeah. a lot of things that's happening. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. positively. Yeah, that's good. The nation. Six months to election. <laughs> It happens. The nation. Build up. Nigeria bound ship with arms held in South Africa. Um, Ajimobi Alafi and Yefele to resolve face of over music house demolition. Opposition cannot distract us, says President. APC disowns timetable for primaries and U.S. imports of Nigeria crude in record four. Banks suspend Bidro de Shonjo's accounts over taxes. Okay. Well, that's a South African ship. story, please. Yes, this oh, um, okay. a, this guy ship. called um, 20, a 28-year-old guy, Okoli Paul, um, they are both South Af they're, they're both Igbos living in South Africa, sharing the same house, was stabbed to death by his friend and roommate. It's a different story, though. It's a different story. Oh, a different oh, story. I wanted to so take the, 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 the one that had the arms. So oh, yeah. Yeah. a Russian ship yes. had uh, a vessel with 20 containers, yes. mm -hmm. had all 20 containers full of arms. And yes. now, according to the investigation, they were added for Lagos wow. and yes. the U.S. So this sh ship was intercepted. It had illegal arms and it was adding for Lagos, with all the list of arms that we've recovered so far, that we've not been able to have a prosecution. Are coming. What are you expecting? So mm -hmm. shipping papers. There are a lot of bottlenecks, the paperwork involved in getting a, a, a ship, a vessel here. How do they get cleared? What happens? So why don't we have prosecution of these things happening? And this was a... 2019 is around the corner. 20 containers. Spokesperson for the Transnet um, Transportation in South Africa, I cannot pronounce her name, said 
that the um, cargo had sensitive materials, explosives hmm. in there. In hey, coming they, to Lagos, they got a tip off and intercepted this. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Egbawa, Egbawa, Egbawa. Egbawa. It was an African criminal investigation. It wasn't as if it was that. It wasn't our own country. It wasn't our intelligence. They stopped it at, oh, it wasn't um, our intelligence. It's, they stopped it at Port Elizabeth. Port Elizabeth. Okay, so it's, it's not even in Nigeria. Nigeria. It hadn't come, gotten here, but, but they knew that it was, it was headed, headed to Nigeria. Here, that was what the paper was saying. But like, what they might say, the deterrent would be where there's prosecution of those they've been caught before. Mm, very, that would be the strong deterrent. The ones we've caught in here, what did we do with the people? Who has the AFLS story? So, Mr. Inkayefele was finally able to meet with the governor of Oyo State on this issue that we have been, we have been talking about. Been and the governor said that, you know, this issue is not about any personal interest between both of us. It's the government, it's a clash between rule of law and personalities, and that is not about him. But they will look for ways to go about it. He was accompanied with, um, he, no, he mm. coincided, coincided with the visit of the Obas on the Eid festival and the annuity on the condolence visit. So a lot of people put him out inside the begging and the begging are happy. Is it that they so, should not totally demolish? Hopefully. Because it's been partially demolished and that's what they wanted to do. They said they were going to reclaim the land that um, the music house um, encroached. encroached upon and that's what they've done. So, so if it's the government sort of wants like to delineate, after death, they should have is, done. If the land is truly um, encroaching. Uh, 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 encroaching or you know, causing any kind of music, building um, uh, infrastructure uh, distraction or something, danger. Relocate it, compensate him, do something, but you know, don't Maybe start to burn the lands. Okay, to. leave it there. Because it's a fellow people should just bypass sounds, traffic. Yes. I don't but understand. Brian, do you understand? Let's I, just I totally... say, okay, let me can we just quickly explain that one, did he break the law? If yes. he did, take the legal course, which is he went to court to stop you. Stop. Allow the court to now say, oh, true, true, true. This thing is um, encroaching. Oh, yeah, go and bring it down. Um, compensate him. Not before you have finished all negotiations, as you mentioned, then you go ahead and make it seem personal. Right. Well, we we want to like see... we are ignorant of the yes, on that we point. want to see the effective on that point, implementation so. of process. the law. Yes. It's very important. Let's move on to Daily yeah. Sun. Buhari to APC defectors. Your exit won't affect us. First, federal government lists federal projects in Southeast. Mm -hmm. mm. Nine roads being repaired in zone. Mm. Ajmobi reads route acts to NURTW over chairman's death. APC fortunes swell as rep joints in Abu Abia. Anga in Southeast over Python Dance 3. So um, sure. I, can I take the Python dance and the, the major headline, I, I have that story, but the Python dance three, um, the army, they've done Python dance one and two, mm -hmm. and they're planning mm. the third one. They've announced last week. Yes. Yeah. And the Southeastern leaders are saying that the second one left a lot of destruction, was cries and um, bloodshed. Yes. And so this third one, can we just relocate it to the northeast? Well, there's another where kind there's of... serious issue because since the last one in the southeast, there's been relative peace. Okay. So I'm just quoting the paper. Yeah. I wanted to take the president um, saying that the, the so, exit will not be. So, Sheo Gaba was speaking, today is what Thursday. He was speaking, anyways, during the holidays on behalf of the president, saying that you cannot take away from the president's. Um, um, success on economy, security, and that, to quote him, that we're happy when people are happy with the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Quickly, PDP responded. I wanted to quote them. I don't remember their own <laughs> quotes. <laughs> but, but the chairman of the ADC mm -hmm. um, said that this government has become the government of lies. There's, there's also a quote, how they quoted it, perpetual lies. Okay, we have to move on. Unfortunately, I was going to take the story on the Southeast. The federal government is saying that they have they They've spent done, about 16 let me billion. They spent 16 billion on four roads right. fully constructed and that about 69 other project, projects ongoing. are ongoing right. within right. Southeast. Um, okay. um, um, Alaji Lai Mohamed mentioned the fact that there's no area of, there's no section or location in Nigeria that has been neglected by the current administration. Okay. Moving on very quickly to Vanguard, hardship oh, ahead as third million bridge cost. is shot. I think that's the only other story we haven't taken here. Tears as Oris Wiliki, uh, Magic Fashek, others pay tribute to Ras Kimono. Uh, let me take another story that I haven't taken. Nigeria stabs compared to death in South Africa. That was the yeah. story you taken earlier. And CBN unveils new guidelines for credit to agri manufacturing. So Third Man Bridge has been shot. And, well, I've not seen yeah, the report. Sensational hardship. I passed through Oro this morning. No hardship. The traffic so, is still light. What is important is that there are now, the trucks are returning to our own side. Please, 
they should continue to put the tax force and spread them yeah. around so that the hardship does not come on that side. That I invited Seal to our program this morning and his major issue was once that bridge is short, <laughs> we don't do bridges. <laughs> yeah, because you can't sit down in hours of traffic. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we ask a special question. In a family, mm. hmm. man and wife, mm -hmm. who owns the womb? Is womb or my womb? <laughs> <laughs> and later, our celebrity guest takes the couch. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs> So thanks for staying with us. In Africa, it's general knowledge that once you're married, especially as a lady, mm. everything belongs, well, you sometimes in some cultures, you're the property, so you belong to the man. Mm. Recently on Twitter, a Nigerian couple residing in Festec town um, in Lagos on the verge of separation after the husband connived with the doctor to remove his wife's womb. Mm. So we ask, no, no. who really owns no, no. the womb? What are your thoughts on this? You can join the conversation. You can call us on 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. When I read this story, I remembered my own story. I, somebody I know hmm. very well, hmm. right? Her husband, while she was almost unconscious, you know, her husband forced her to sign the consent form to allow them to remove her womb hmm. after three children. Can she wasn't. Imagine? She didn't know what she was doing, but oh. she was not really in her right sense of mind. So when she came, when she came around, and later it was about a month later, her husband then told her what happened. Now, of course, she, she felt really betrayed. That how could you do that how? to me? But if we read the story that we, we we took, what are your general thoughts? I mean, the man will say, "I own you. You have paid you your bride price. You Everything you are, I own. So I can do with you whatever I choose." Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Who wants to go first? Um, okay, go ahead, Nima. So, I, as much as I agree that in a marriage, two own each other, there are certain limitations that must be added to. I can understand how betrayed this woman felt. I would wake up the next morning, number one, is a good, valid grounds for divorce. Ewo. Two, I would sue all parties involved. Ewo. All parties, because when, you, I, when I was in the hospital, I used to see, you're going for a, a procedure, which is a CS, and they're asking, where's your husband to come and sign? I'll be like, is she not literate? If she's not literate, is she not an adult? When the person is above 18, mm -hmm. that person should be the one to consent to every procedure done on them. Mm -hmm. I consented to, every, in my entire life, every single one, except maybe the last minute when I was in emergency for the birth of my son. Every single thing they've done on this body, I would sign, read through papers and sign. That's how it's supposed to be. Mm. You have the right of consent in your conscious state. Now, when you're unconscious and there's an emergency, it's life-threatening, they look for your next of kin. It's the reverse in Nigeria. It's they will, they will, you are sitting, your eyes are clear like this. They are telling you what is right for you. They will not say, oh, God should come. Wait, Alaja, to come and sign. is that the law in Nigeria? That is the law all over the world. Including Nigeria. And, and every adult above 18, Just including Nigeria, okay. including. Okay. And this, this mentality of we are husband's property, which the people have by whatever law, whatever tradition brought into practice, is totally wrong. Okay. Totally. All right. In, in, in a situation where a man actually marries a, marries a young lady, maybe under age 17. Maybe, maybe 17. Okay. Um, he, he's taking care of everything about her, and he says we're going to have four children, and they both agreed. And after they've had four kids, mm. he now uh, says, you know what? I don't want you. This form of security for him uh, because he doesn't want you because you're a young girl, you're pretty, you're just get, you're just coming, you're beautiful, you're not, you're blossoming. Uh, as you as you blossom at the age of 25, he doesn't want you going out there. So he says, you know, what? take remove that room first. Hey. And just to have his form with his own way of saying, you know what, you are not going anywhere, you belong to me. Some mm. men see that way because when this person, because this, person, this, this story I'm saying, I know the person. I, can't, I, just want, I don't want to tell you how close the person is to me. Ah. The man did it because of security. He felt that his wife was young and he didn't want her to go elsewhere. That was his rationale. Okay, so the mm. thing is, we cannot behave like your Western world 
we are in Nigeria and we're in Africa. Hmm. We are people that would tell a man to prostrate a hundred times to marry one woman. We are the ones that would ask a man to bring a million naira, to bring a goat, to bring a obi. You are literally to buy, a human being. To buy, to buy everything buy human possible. Being. Mm. Because you mm -hmm. are given over that woman mm. onto yeah. the man mm. to take care of her, mm. to make decisions for her, mm. as long as to, in court, own her, mm. as long as we live within that rule. We cannot begin to form westernized. We cannot begin to form modernity. We cannot begin to form feminism, except we want to expunge traditional marriage. Right. So if we are going to do legal wedding alone, we, which means that I am bound only by the legality of this marriage, then if my husband does anything contrary to my legal rights, of which we have shared everything in the marriage 50-50, right. you understand. are paying half the rent, I'm right. paying half this one. The right. man has calculated in his expenses that right. having more children than this is going so to cost to me do something. Culture, do culture. If you want to do culture, do culture. If you want to do modern 21st century family setting, then you mm. focus on that. But mm. you cannot eat, eat your cake and have it. You must choose one. In our, in our country, we have prioritized culture more than any other thing. Right. We are the ones that would stress a man so to pay every bill. I'm waiting to hear what you're saying. No. In that case, uh -huh. a man has a right. Uh -huh. The man has a right so to decide you. how a woman, if I want you to be slim, I say, and lose weight. If I want you to be fat, I'll say add weight. If I want you to have long hair, I will tell you, Moti Rae, Jumoke, you own me. I, I own you totally. So I tell you how to look. I tell you how I want you to cook my food. I tell you how I want you to sleep in bed. I choose all your life. Choose what? That's all. You see, unfortunately, it's our reality. Culture is Okay, so I now realize you are very confused. Because this culture that you people are talking about has confused us. Wait, so Calm down, you send the girl to school to know her rights. Mm. Not everybody does. Wait, 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 she wait. Wait, wait, wait so a human being, right to life. So you now say, eh, I own you. Why? Because we marry. And her two become one. I agree. But why did you not go and remove your something? Uh, hey, is, is, that not, is it not the same family planning? That's it. Is it? Is he not? So he not. Why did you not remove your something? Okay, is wait, not? wait, but you see, both of us, both, both arguments make mm. are valid. Mm. But I don't want you to mix it and join, uh, join the issues, Jim, okay? okay. There is the educated young girl mm -hmm. who has been sent to school. That one would be exposed to the legal um, rights she has as an individual. But there is the village girl who was married, who mm. probably has never been exposed to that lifestyle, mm. who has been groomed in culture. There are diff two different worlds. No, what was she saying? No, what was she saying? Whether you're no. a village or your mother, uh -huh. you have agreed to a traditional wedding. Right. You have agreed to kneel down. You know the wedding day? What do you do? You kneel down. I you, did not kneel. You kneel down and in traditional wedding in Yoruba culture, right. you kneel down and you put the food in his mouth. I did not. Yeah. That's to say you're my lord. He mm. will not carry you. That yeah. is, he has carried responsibility. Right. Yeah. In that, invariably, you are his responsibility. Right. Except you are so modern right. that you decide not to do traditional wedding. Right. And you say that this is a modern marriage. We are in a very tush world. I'm not going to allow you to do this to me. I'm going to make decisions for my body on my, by myself. I'm going to pay the rent with you. We're housemates. Okay. We're partners in this journey. Right. Okay. Then you can't make get me, angry. Let me, let me give you gist about this story. When the lady in question found out, she started by breaking the TV carried all his clothes. In fact, I don't think she wanted to burn the house. If she wanted to, she would have burnt the clothes in the house. She took them outside and burnt them. The man was now scattering, uh, running up and down, begging and begging. They say, eh, hey, madam, wait now, wait now. Uh, I say, listen, medically, the one organ that controls a woman's hormones is her womb. You remove this without her permission. Can you imagine? Ah! If she burns down the house, she has legal rights now. Which not to right. control yeah, the hormones. Okay, she does not know now. Yes! It's your mom. I cannot control my hormones anymore. My it was sister. done without my consent. Okay, me. Me. My sister, Mora, let's just put things in perspective. Uh -huh. So, the goal of this man was to control the best. Family planning. Mm -hmm. Family planning. And there are several. And he had the same right he's claiming to have over her. Over himself, he could that's have gone for a vasectomy. Yeah. He did not Me think, well. wait, this will rule, can finish. Now, that's someone's daughter. Mm. In case... He refuses to appear oh, or show goodness. when an emergency happens. Right. There are other members who are also next of kin. Right. He didn't have to go to that length right. without a consent and take out a womb. That was the extreme case. That's and he's a selfish, it, he's a very selfish what person. What if it was life threatening and she was she couldn't really decide? Uh, no, 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 no
Nyangu doesn't come into this story yeah, yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. No. Why is it possible? Wait, what is he was selfish no, because on, he was selfish because he said he does not enjoy using male contraceptives. So when and his wife complained that pills make her bloat. She puts on weight when she does that. But his angle of air, but well, we are green now. Three children. You already have five from what seven pregnancies. Okay, let me take this One call. Thing. Let me take this call. Abba, are you there? Hello, uh, good morning, Mariah. Thanks for calling. Go ahead, please. Mariah, this is somebody's life. I bet. Make them go arrest this man. Put them what? here. God bless this you. Is not Abba, I money. miss you. Not Amad the money. This I is, miss this, you. This uh -uh. somebody's life. I bet. Make them go arrest them. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. what they're supposed to do. Arrest. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Jerry. Better. They did not specify who is paying the rent in this situation. Is because for a man to oh. make a show, who is paying the school fees in this situation? Is the man. So if a, when a man begins to take responsibility for everything, okay. you become a child to him. Mm -hmm. So if my child, if I realize that this, what I want to decision I want to make, will be for the future of everybody, best practice for everybody involved. I'll make that decision. Why did you move it to an answer now? Eh, eh, because he is responsible for himself. He's taking care of himself. Uh, the woman on the other hand is meant to serve him. This is uh, a tragedy. That's the culture. That's no, the culture. No, she's not agreeing with this. I don't understand why we are being... Reality. You are, we are we accept forming, or not. We are forming ignorance of the culture yes. because you have married... A, the average man okay, out there wait, no. married a man to meet his needs. Uh -uh. Give him children. Uh -uh. Take care of him. So if your pregnancy, you have five children, Joe, you want to have more? No. Do you understand? So why don't we just take this belay out of the way so that we can enjoy yes, ourselves belay, going belay on? Is the question. That's is it belay is the question. And it's my belay. No. I have paid for it. No. 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 One thing could have solved this. I'm at a man that could have solved this. Land. I, have, you don't pay. I have a friend. I have a close friend who had four kids. And she had them so fast. Because she married the same year. She had them so fast. Before I was done with two, she had done four. So she said, I will take out my womb on my next uh, pregnancy and she made sure she had a CS so she could take it out. That's her decision. That's, That's a, couple, a, couple, a couple that had discussed it, rich. Okay. Right, That's the quest, this problem. Oh. This Adibola, are you there? Thanks for calling. Don't do traditional wedding. Good morning, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Go ahead, please, you're live. I think uh, we need to get started to decide. The man did it because he didn't know the way our forefathers used to do it. Let me tell you, many of our forefathers, uh. they don't allow their women to remarry after them. They don't allow them to have children after them. So how did it? There are so many ways they have done it. My oh. father had 13 wives. Mm. He died 45 years after. None of them could have a child anymore. So anymore. what did Any he do? Them. How? And I know, and I know my, my father not did the same thing too. How? There are many people <laughs> in this culture that they don't allow their women to have a child to be touched by another man after them. Oh God, father must be a king. He's no, only no, king. No, he's doing something. No, uh, Nima, he's not just this saying. one does not even apply. The woman is not even saying she wants to marry somebody else. The man is just afraid of the responsibility of feeding more than three children. Well, it takes two to tango now. The man was knackered. Okay, See? we have to round up. Oh, we have God. to round up. You see, it was important for us to hear Can I different tweet? sides of this angle, of the, of this story. But let's just take a few tweets. Mm -hmm. Abba said, this is good morning. Is Papa saying that the man has the right to remove or cut any part of the wife's body? Don't do traditional wedding. Because he has paid bride price. Yes or no, Tokwe? Mm -hmm. Don't do traditional wedding. Ola, follow your... tradition, follow everything. Ola, Don't Yori, choose. Jeremiah says the man has no right over the womb. The woman owns the womb and not the man. Whatever happens, Finish. Tokwe, you should not be saying that. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then let me take one last tweet. Uh, NB Love says nobody owns anybody. Mm. Okay, I think we. I, to, I know talk was hard for you to be on that really side, but it was important for us to hear views from different angles. Let's go on a break. When we come back, our celebrity guest takes the couch. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Joseph Yobo is a household name in Nigerian football. He's a former Nigerian international who has been captain and also uh, captain 101 times and represented the Super Eagles at the three FIFA World Cups and six Africa Cup of Nations tournaments. Welcome with us. Joseph Yobo to the show. Thanks, thanks for having me. Oh, so you can call the show 070-8066-8014. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag YobuTVC so we can read your tweets. Right, so before we go into you, you heard our conversation earlier doing Hot Topic. Yes, In I your did. view, who owns the womb? The woman, hmm. the husband, or both? 
um, I like to say Bob, but realistically, it's a woman. You know, she, you know, she has a body. Aha. It's her body. You know? Is it not so about it's wrong for a man to make that kind of decision? Yeah, it is wrong. Oh. Yeah, he has to be mutual. If it's not, then the woman has a right, right. to make her decision. Yeah. It's crazy. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so you're obviously an international star. I mean, mm. captain of the Nigerian football. And recently, we just had the, um, the World Cup. And, I mean, as much as we're all excited about Nigeria being qualified, what are your yeah. general views? Do you think we'll win this World Cup sometime? I mean, we, I felt bad that we didn't even go as far as we thought. And we had a new coach. We're excited about the new coach. What do you think went wrong? And do you think there's, there's, hope, there's hope for us in the future? It's with the new players we have to, meet the, to make the World Cup one of these days. Yeah, I think um, there's always hope. The future is always bright for us because um, football has a lot. I think preparation is a big right. key. And um, we, have, we have a lot of young players that came through at this World Cup. Mm -hmm. you know? So the future is there for them to grab. We have a new coach there, you know, he's done, he's done okay. But it takes time. I think for you to build a strong team that can win the, the Nations Cup or the World Cup, you need to spend a few years together. Mm. You know, we, we're very good at chopping and changing players all the time mm. without, it has to be a gradual progression. Right. And we don't have that. So we have start and stop and break. So I think um, if they can keep these young players and then bring in a couple of young, good ones, mm -hmm. then we have the future well, is good for us. How young ones, actually? Um, you think they're good enough? Yes, yeah, you know, football also depends on the form that you're in. Okay. But I, I always have this issue while, you know, I was in the national team that, you know, the, um, there has to be a gradual progression. You have to also keep some of the experienced players to mentor these younger ones. Oh, I get that. So recently yeah. you started the Joseph Yubo Charity Foundation. Tell us about, about that. Yeah, I think that was um, in 2007. It was mainly for the um, underprivileged. Like um, I gave scholarship to kids, especially from my region, and, and helped them with education. Okay. And then recently, you know, it's now made with um, sports and education because I think sports is a very powerful tool. So we're merging um, sports and education also for the underprivileged kids. So it's different from your sports academy, the, the one you have? Yeah, it, it, it works um, simultaneously a little bit, but um, it's kind of different because the foundation focuses on the underprivileged kids. Like I want to go to the remote areas where people would not go okay. and help these kids that nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find a gemstone, a diamond where, like, Especially in football, and, and, and if, you, if you understand football a lot, you see that there are kids in these remote areas. Yes. They can, can barely even go to school, mm -hmm. they can barely even eat, but they have this talent. So what yes. happens to them, they've been overlooked, and that's the area that they found. So do you have a structure to train effectively? Because I hear a lot of people say that Nigerian football, footballers rely more on talent than skill, and that for you to become a superstar as yeah. a footballer, you must improve your talent into becoming a skill and we're just relying on talent. Do you have a structure to take people from skilled, um, from talent to skilled footballers? Yeah, that's why I'm launching um, the Joseph Yobo Sports Academy in Lagos. Because oh. we find the talent and we develop the talent. So there's a whole lot because I also am a product of um, grassroots development. Mm. So when I went to Europe, like I came through the academies. Mm. So there's a whole lot you have to learn. Not just the talent, you have to go to school and that's why we're merging. Mm. I'd like to know in Europe what you do because I have a footballer based in Europe, who was well abused in his contract. How are you helping footballers in Europe, or young Nigerian footballers who think there's a greener pasture there, there's a, there's a big world there, every opportunity is out there. They go there and someone signs their contract, gets their pay, you know, puts them in a the kind of slave it's, arrangement. How are you helping to enlighten him? I mean, his federal government, what kind of question is this larger? You are an experienced uh, footballer. Have an idea. Because, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. lots of people who really You're a help. footballer, you're like, a re for me, a go-to person. You can tell them this is not yeah. the reality. I had to walk my way right, through. Right. This is what I had to do. How are you putting that information out there so people know how to go to Europe? You don't just enter the plane right. and go to Europe. Yeah, that's also part of what the Joseph Kibble Sports Academy is going to do. There's mentorship, there's leadership, there's training skills as well. So it's all encompassing. Like people are too quick to like go to Europe, just like we all uh, uh, what we all did. But one thing is they have eight people that are agents. I think parents should also get involved. When you are a minor, the parents are in control, not the agent, because you're, you're a minor, you're under 18, so you right. can sign for yourself. Right. So I think the parents should also get involved, not just giving their talented child so to the agent and then whatever happens. But if the parent is uneducated, how do they know they're left from their right? better. Particularly when they're just looking for greener pastures for yeah. themselves. Yeah, but that's also what we're doing. And also other people that have, been, that have done so well in football will also be part of it, educating people 
that don't, don't just jump to going into Europe and then, you know, you get messed so up over NGO there. So is set up around football mm -hmm. and all that. I know that we have other, other footballers that have health-related NGOs and all that, but you're, this is what you... Football. Yeah, not purely. You know, football is the center of it. Okay. No, but it's, it's sports. Yeah. yeah, I also think that there are other areas of sports that have not been tapped into and okay. other talents are, are wasted yeah. because not everybody can play football. Right. You know, I was very good at a few other things, right. but I choose football. Right. So what, are, what happened to those kids that so I grew up with? how do we with? harness the 50,000 plus Nigerians playing international football outside? And because we know internationally they have all these numbers out there. How do we harness those people to come home and play for the national team? I think that's, that, that's the work that the um, Federation is doing, the NFF, you know, that's, that's their department. I'm sure they should have some ambassadors or agents that are looking out for all these players around Europe. And Joseph, yeah. I've been waiting for you for a very <laughs> long time. Okay. It's not 2014 World Cup alone, no. And the one before that. Okay. Any time that we lose our matches at World Cup, Joseph Yobo, it's always you that we call your name. I have not seen you today. <laughs> I have seen you, brother. Why? Yeah, why? Why uh, you people don't even aim to even pass the group stage at all? Why? Tell us what the problem is. Let us help you address it. I'm pain. And you. if it is spiritual, we have to buy jersey that we cannot afford. Yeah. Just to support you people, and then you will now allow you to go to enter. Why, Joseph? Why? Yeah. I think we are always in a like. When I was a player, I didn't <laughs> see this other side of a fan. And now I watch the 2018 World Cup, so I could now, you know, be in the position of a fan. Mm -hmm. It's difficult. You know, the expectation is very high. Yeah. You know, I think because of um, the standards that those that were there before my era set, everybody yeah. thinks about everything the is prepared. and your cultures, you know, yeah, the I, I think, West. I think they, yeah, I've, I've, people have asked me this question. I said, they had a great team. I've played with some great individual players. So building a team is what is going to give you success. And who is, who is going to do that? Right. It's the coach. It's yeah, a federation. Yeah. Like you rightly said, you know, there are over 50,000 people out there in Europe. How do you pick the best players that suits every position? Mm. So it is something that is going to take some time, but we need to put a lot of work and emphasis That's into where that. That's where we take this call. Yeah. Good morning. Thanks. Are you there? He's still there. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I'm there. Go ahead, please. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, my name is Estopio. I'm calling from Okota. Yes, go ahead, Obiara. Yes, I'm calling from Okota. Yes, go ahead, you're live. Um, go ahead, I want please. to, uh, there is something you mentioned during the um, newspaper review. So I want to speak particularly to Mima, who is a legal practitioner. You mentioned something about uh, the, prosec the arms, arms prosecution, about the, the arms that the customs arrested, yes. and you said there has not been prosecution. Yes. And I'm, I'm surprised that Mima is saying this because I want to refer her to Justice Fajit's court in Federal High Court, Ikoyu and Justice Aikawa's court. Just, just two courts, these two courts. These, these cases are there, ongoing, and she knows how, what the length of time it takes to prosecute a matter in Nigeria. Mm. And she's saying that there is no prosecution. I'm an insider, and I just want to let her go Thank and make findings. And each case, this matter comes up, almost all the issues right. Thank you for the information. And I'm sure after the, after the, the, the vacation, all right. I'm shot by October or November. Right. The trials are ongoing out in those two matters. And trials have really gone far. Mm. All right. uh, Thank, Thank you very for much, the information. We hope to get a conviction. Then I'll talk about it. Okay. So my question so, was, how does this, um, the issues that we have around the failure of our team to cross a particular stage in, in every World Cup, how, stage. how does it lead ah. link to, how is it linked to the coaches that we it's have? Painful. We will see in Nigeria, in our history, we are the, world, the country that changes coaches like Ankara the most. <laughs> so we don't have a stable coach. Yeah. If we had a stable coach, for instance, that's my own opinion, he would know which countries to visit. It would take him a space of, of at least over 10 years to 20 years to develop our team. But we have our coaches being changed every I can name them. Mima, all of them. May I jump so on that So how question? is it linked to it? Do you have a different view about, you know, the coaches? Because I wanted to jump on the question because Coach Westerhoff took us, you know, to many World Cups and Nigeria's team under him did well. He came back to Nigeria and even set up a football academy where he started training young people. Oh, so in okay. addendum to her question, is that what we need? That continues. Okay, he's too old. He cannot be coached forever. But just having that... Seamless transition yeah, and I, consistency. I, I, I think um, the first thing is, is the coach. 
when you find a good coach that is competent and have the capacity to take the country mm. or you know, the national team to the level that we want it to be, then you have to keep him for, for a longer period of time. Second, let's go into the issue of um, how do you harness the talent. Mm. It has to be, we have the under 13, or under 15, under 17, and so oh, I came through the under 21s. Mm. But how many of the players that were even better than me at that era made it to the, to the, national, the senior national team? Mm. So that's also where we're missing Is it out. Is it It's not, it's not. It's not really, you can say political a little bit, but I don't think so. I think there's no gradual pro progression. If you find a super talent at a young age, you must monitor and mentor that talent to attain its full potential. Let's go on, When we come back, we'll talk about your potential political career right. and your supermodel wife. Hey, oh, that's it. Yes. We'll be right back. <laughs> Um, all right, so we're hearing news from the grapevine that mm. you might be getting into politics. Um, I mean, we know that you guys earn about 40 million naira a week, I heard. I mean, I don't know how true that is, but that's <laughs> the gist money. out there. But yeah. somebody with that kind of money and uh, influence, do you really think politics is the next? Or is it true that you're thinking politics is the next? Because we see you hanging out with all these top guys. We see you with somebody. Mm. You see you with Governor <laughs> yeah. with Buhari. You, you, you got to yeah. see President Buhari, Seth. Yeah, I think um, because of my position as you know, a captain and, and the way I serve the nation, I'm, you know, I cut across a lot of people. I think it started from Jonathan, met President Buhari, with um, Baba Tinubu, and now Ambode. So I meet a lot of people, and they, and they recognize me because of my service to the nation. Not talking about politics. I'm not really, it's not what I really want to get into. Okay. But looking at it, why should we leave the position for people that don't know how to govern us okay. or to bring good leadership to always be the ones ah, to so lead? Is it you so I am, I am, that I will bring good leadership? No, no, I, in my, when, when that time me. comes, I will talk about it. You know, I've been a leader in my sector and you know, it takes a lot of discipline oh, okay. to get to a certain level and consistency. Okay. So, but when that time comes, not for me, I'm not contesting right now, okay. but I'm also advocating for good governance. Yeah. And like you say about That's politics, I have a, I develop, I have a, a partner with a youth group and we've been working since 2014 and this period I told them that you know what we're supporting good governance True. it doesn't really matter Nigeria needs to have a new dimension if yeah. you were a good leader and you're bringing so good are you governance or PDP or third force he's good governance right now I'm good governance that's all in the state I would not like we're in the same party I stand I will stand up I am not I am not contesting I am not contesting if I was contesting definitely I'll be under a party Okay, yeah, but I'm not contesting David. right now, so I'm. Let me I'm take this call from David. David, David, are you there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm here. Good please, morning. Please go ahead. Thanks for calling. Yeah, I want to ask uh, Yobo a question. Yes. Uh, Joseph Yobo. Yes. What's his name? David. What, what <laughs> a good captain we have in you. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you. Uh, my problem. Uh, I want to ask you a question, uh, like what you are saying about coaches. Why is it in Nigeria that, like, when we have a good team under 17, under 20, we hardly see them in super able? Mm. Some of them, you can't hear them anymore. What is the problem? And they have been growing from every generation to other generation. Every year, World Cup, we have a set of new team. When we come back, instead of us to pick our pieces from where we fall, Will be dragging who will lead. I think okay, you already answered yeah. that. That's the okay. problem. Yeah, let me just talk to him. Yeah. Hi, David. Yeah, I think we, we, we touched that um, earlier. But um, just to answer um, to your question, I think yeah, there has to be a greater progression. This mm -hmm. question, this question directly goes to the leadership of the Nigerian Football Federation mm -hmm. because. They start from a young age. You see these talented young players because we're very good at it. Yes. So what happens to them? Another thing is when they go to Europe, what club are they going to? Because mm. that's another thing. Some people like, you can be a teenager and you're going to an Arabic country. What are you going to study there? I, I came through a good uh, grassroots football club. 
mm. where they understand how to mentor young players. Mm. So also the teams that our young players go to affect us. Mm. Yeah. You have to go, they have to go to where they will have rapid progression. We hear you are okay. making plenty money. <laughs> and a lot of you guys go broke. So how have you managed your resources? You know, we see people with flashy cars. You married a beauty queen. Please, exactly. That's the question. Yes, how is that Is it part of the how progress of uh, success us. or, you know, those things how that come with fame? How can you afford to marry a fine girl. dash you? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you know, I think um, I'm not that bad myself. No, no, she's, uh, you know, she, she is the queen. I think when love comes in between, like, you don't look at certain things. You just, you know, and, you know, we've been blessed since eight percent. years. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I think when you want to get close to somebody, you, you can feel something. It started from love at first sight, then it developed into marriage, and now we have a beautiful family and a beautiful she home. She was so too young to have, been, think, to have been in love at the time that you married. Is that uh, what no, I think, yeah, yeah like, okay, I, you know, I, like I lived in the Western world for many years. Like, I was 17 when I left as well. So people, yeah, people get married when they, when they feel they found a partner. Yeah, it's it's not about it. age. Okay. And it's also Let me how take much call from Lucas. Yeah. Lucas, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Yoko. <laughs> yes. My idol. Thank you very much. Yeah, Lucas, go on. Yeah, uh, yeah, my idol. Thank you, oh. thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lucas. Oh. Oh, we, we can have you here, Lucas. Let's go to because I know um, you and Ada. Okay, okay he's there. there. Oh. He's a bit oh, yeah, yeah. breaking up. Yes, yeah, ahead. we can hear a bit now. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. yes. go on, Lucas. Oh yeah, our league is very bad. When you look at Egypt. Yo, you look at Egypt. Mm -hmm. Egypt carries uh, Nations Cup seven times because their league are very good. Mm -hmm. When someone plays under 17, under 20, the person will vanish because there's no good league that will employ the person and pay mm -hmm. you well. Mm -hmm. Everybody will run away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, our coaches don't have free hands. It was mm -hmm. only West Ham that had free hands and was dealing directly uh, with uh, Augustus Aiko Moden during mm -hmm. the regime. Yeah. All coaches now will be directed and, and there will be supply players by the ministers, mm. commissioners, and president. Mm. This is my brother, this is my cousin. It kills our league and it kills our national team. Yeah, mm. true. very true. true. Very coaches true. Thank, you, Thank you very much, Lucas. Thank you, Fantastic Lucas. Coming. Yeah. Mm. Okay, let's. I have a few treats. Please go ahead. That's okay. Um, Oluwe Mimo Adeni says, please ask Mr. Mr. Yobo, how do we tackle the issue of age factor? Meaning that we know that Nigerians, when you say you are 17, you are actually 27. Yes, I think that doesn't apply to everybody, but it is something that has been out there. And that's why you develop this, this young talent from a tender age. Mm. From them going to primary, secondary school, you should know what their age is. Okay. And when you try to develop their talent, there will be any need for them to like drop their age. Mm. It's because there's no, no opportunity. We have to now create these opportunities oh. and then develop their talent to make them believe that they don't need to. So permit me to go personal a bit. Okay. Because we want to, because you're a fine guy mm. and you, you have Thank money. You. Mm. <laughs> have you been faithful to your wife? It will. Yes, I have. From day one? Yes, I have. been just out there that there's always names the, are throwing around. Yeah, I don't want to throw out the names. But before the end, before yeah. I even got married, like some people have that issue. Like people always talk, even people that haven't even seen me. Right. Like even right now, there are people that haven't even seen me that talk about me. So you can you can stop people from talking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, if you know your spouse and you people are happy, then it doesn't matter what people say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so your wife trusts mm -hmm. you? Yeah, she does. Oh, okay, cool. I've seen, I've seen a lot of footballers in the past. That, you know, we thought they, ha they had a good future plan or a retirement plan for themselves and things just go. Yeah. As a, as a footballer, what did you put in place? That what you are you to, putting in place? Or what are you putting in place to secure that future so that, you know, you, you know it's a kind of contract that you do. It's not, this money is not going to be pouring uh, yeah. into your uh, right. old age. What are you putting in place to ensure that in your old age, you don't start to come from government and say somebody's on the sick bed, you know, you need yeah. help. What are, what are right. you doing? I think, like, you know, I have a few things, but let me just hit the one that benefits everybody. The Joseph Yebo Sports Academy, that's a sports institution, that's a school. So I'm merging it together. Mm -hmm. And you know, school is a long time thing. It's yeah. not something that, you know, I still go back to my primary school and visit people. Mm -hmm. So it's been there, it's always gonna be there. Mm -hmm. So that's one investment that I'm making. Mm -hmm. And I have other investments as well, but you must also do something that you have passion for. Mm -hmm. If you don't have passion for something, why do it? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that will, that will cause, we all make mistakes, but don't make the one that you can now recover from. 
<laughs> yeah. okay, so what's the future for you? What should we, aside from school and the academy, what should we be looking out for that you, um, Joseph Yobo is going to be, going doing to be doing in the future? Yeah. Nothing in particular, but everything at the same time, because, you know, I, I think I, like I can do a lot of things. You okay. know, I like, to, I like to surprise people. Are you going into music? No, nah, not music. I think <laughs> I would rather, when it comes to talent, yeah. I'd rather focus on sports because okay. I'm, everybody's focusing on football, but I'm going around it and, and no, sports is huge. Right. Yeah. It's a huge what tool for the nation. How many kids do you have now? I have three kids. You have any wow. plan to have more? You got oh, no, nah, I think now nah, I'm done. I just want to give my kids the best and be able to, you know, give them the support that they need, not just money. So you're an advisor you have to be in a good. State. You, you already have a leg into politics, so you know. No, nah, I'm not an advisor. You're a special advisor now. Uh -uh. To the governor, on, I think yeah, something. I, I, I heard that too, but. <laughs> yeah, you heard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On sports yeah, and yeah. development. On newspapers. Oh, yeah. It is, it is complicated, so we'll leave, we'll leave there. But, wow. you know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I want to ask a right. cheeky question. So, you are okay with three children, like the man we yeah. discussed today. So, if Adesi decides to go on to number five, will you remove our womb? No, I, I won't remove, but I won't consent to it. Because, like I said, I want to be able to, like, Take be a good them. father, apart from taking care of be a good father to my kids. And that means mentorship. That it's not just giving money or taking them to school. You have to talk to, like my kids right now, my first son is eight, but wow. he's like one of my closest buddy. Right. Like we talk, we communicate. And that's, that's you know, cool. that's, that's, that's important cool. to me than having a lot of kids. Yeah. Yes, you can have a big home, but kids, are you really taking care of them or are you having nannies to take care of them for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's there classic. must there must be a balance Such in between. Such a pleasure having you on the show, Joseph. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. much. This is your first time in the studio. Hopefully we'll have you back soon with your family. Yeah. Would you like to see Adai? Is she in the country? Yeah. Yeah, she, right live, now she's in she's she in, live in Nigeria? Yeah, we came back. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we came back. But nice. soon we, we're, going, we're going out again. And just to top off what I said about politics and, and, and look at the governor, Governor Ambode. I like him because of you know, he runs an inclusive government. Right. Mm -hmm. Government for the people. He right. listens to the people. Right. If there are any issues, he comes and addresses it. Okay. So that's, that's one of the reasons that, you know, I pick him as an example right. for the people that I'm going to support. Oh, Anybody wow. that brings good, gov good, good governance, those are the people that we're looking we love at. We love him for. too, though. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you nice. very much for coming on the show. Unfortunately, Thanks. that's all we can take yeah. on the show today. We hope you have a fabulous weekend. Try to enjoy yourself. Stay safe. Preferably just in your house. Then Milan Beach has been closed down. So just sit down for us. Drink your... Is it chap and they drink now? Mm -hmm. And everything. Just relax. And your ram with right. Toku. Have a fabulous day. See you Monday. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs>